Hey everyone, welcome back to TTA Performance's YouTube channel and today we're going to be putting a boost light kit into Rocky. Rocky was equipped without boost lights from the factory. Certain 1980 model cars did have a block off and no boost lights from the factory. Uh, all pace cars did. Rocky is not a pace car and it was not equipped with them. So we're going to be installing my retrofit boost light kit. And here's all the components to it. This is what you get uh, when you purchase it. So you get my 14 gauge steel panel with snap-in LED lights, all powder coated with all the vinyl lettering already attached. It comes with the wire harness, which has a weather pack connector all plugged into the LEDs. We have two pressure switches here. I ha already have them marked. Uh, H and M, meaning the high light and the medium light. They come preset to the factory style uh, pressure settings. Uh, medium comes on at two and a half, three PSI. The high comes on around seven. Now these are a little bit different from the factory ones as they have a vacuum connection. So we will have to run a T and a vacuum hose to it. Then we also have the on off switch here. Um, I'm gonna label it with uh, low and high. Center is off, and then one direction is going to be the dim setting, the low setting. The other setting is going to be high for the brightest setting. This is just to do the brightness of the LEDs. This has nothing to do with boost control or when the, or the boost pressure or anything like that. So don't get confused with high and low is strictly for the dimming of the lights. Medium and high is controlling which light comes on for the pressure. And then we have the wire harness over here that we have to put into the car. Uh, it comes with a 10 amp fuse. There's a ground that we're going to have to hook up. Here's the connections for the pressure switches. This is the connection for the, for the switch. And then this is our weather pack connection to the lights themselves. So we'll move over to the car. So the car, under the hood here, let's see if we can... Under the hood here, this is where the panel is. And I've already removed the speed nuts is what I call them. Um, and we also re already removed the hood insulation. And in order to get the hood insulation out, we had to take out the heat shield. So the heat shield was removed, the hood insulation was removed, and then we took out the speed nuts already. And I'll show you what the speed nuts look like. This is the speed nut. I don't know if it'll focus on that. I can zoom in. There we go. So this is the speed nut. There's six of these holding the hood insert, or the hood scoop insert. So the hood scoop insert is this piece right here. This whole insert comes off. This is how we get at the panel inside. Since, and then there's, here's the six. There's three showing right here. Well, two, third one hiding back there. And then there's also ones uh, under here. There's one poking out there, you can see. So those are the six. So. We're gonna take the panel off. And we'll take it over to the bench. Move this out of the way. So for those that have never seen what the panel looks like, what a block off looks like for an 80, it's just this ribbed panel and it's actually die cast aluminum. It doesn't want to focus too well, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, back up. <laughs> so it's held in, the, pan, the block off panel is held in with two seven millimeter screws. Now normally if it had boost lights, the plastic panel would be in here, there would be another one that was attached here and it would have three. But since this is just a die cast aluminum block off, we're gonna take these out, just the two seven millimeters and we're gonna keep those screws. So, gonna do some tools. I am not prepared. It's kind of a what kind of a show is this? I don't even have all my tools out. All right, two screws are out, and there's your panel. You could tell this car was painted because they didn't mask very well. <laughs> you could still see some blue on there. 
But it's just a die cast block off. It's actually very robust. They should have made the boost lights out of this thing instead of plastic. So we'll leave that to the side. Oh, you can see a lot of overspray and stuff from when they painted the car. This gasket is always deteriorating. I don't know, I, sometimes I leave it off, but this one's somewhat intact. We'll take the new panel. And mount that in there. Sometimes these things you gotta pick up on it. <laughs> you gotta pick up on it sometimes. It's very flimsy right there. Okay. So what does it look like? Wow, there we go. Looking pretty good, a little dusty, got some fingerprints on it. <laughs> but we'll now put this back into the hood. And feed the wiring down in there. Like so, and then we'll get the speed nuts put on. All right, so we're gonna try to, now we gotta find a place to put the switch. And normally, if this car was equipped with boost lights, get rid of this awesome air freshener from 1984. Um, normally, the, the the toggle switch, which would look like this one, similar to this one, this is the rear defogger switch, though. Um, there would be a switch like that in this corner of this panel. Now, this panel is supposed to be blank, but it's very common for cars, you know, back in the day that they would put an equalizer down here, and especially the 80 models, they would cut the panel to add that. So we can't exactly put the switch in the factory location. We don't have enough room. Plus with everything in there, I don't want to take that out. Um, 1981 put the switch behind the, uh, behind the shifter right under the center armrest. And it was actually cut into the panel and the switch would be there. Uh, we could do that too, but I really don't want to cut the console because it's a pretty nice console. So what I think I'm going to do is we have a spot up here next to the rear defogger switch. Normally this would be if the car had a, what they called audio boost, if it had a factory amplifier with a bigger stereo from the factory. Um, obviously this car's not equipped with that. So I think we're gonna take this dash panel out. We're gonna actually cut a hole in this piece and add the switch here for the boost lights. We gotta take this panel out anyway because we're gonna be converting the clock to uh, a boost gauge. So while we do that, we'll take this out and we'll add that. And I don't know if you can see it, but we have the boost lights mounted in the back of the hood. And so why don't we get started with that? All right, so we have the switch already. We, we cut the hole and mounted the switch inside the panel. And then I took one of my decal sets. I have decals that will restore an 80 light switch. And I cut it apart and actually put the, the lettering around it so that we know that it is the turbo light switch. And it's all labeled so we'll install that and then going over by the car what we did by the car is we took the gauge cluster out and we ran the wiring into the car we got a lot of shadows <laughs> into the car we came up and above the steering column went behind the gauges there we have wiring coming out uh, can you get it we have wiring coming out where the switch is going to be and then we're going to wire up our switch right there obviously there's a lot of extra wiring so we're just going to bundle that up and zip tie it and since this car is getting water injection too we're going to run some of the wire uh, water injection wiring and it's also getting the boost gauge in the where the clock was so we're going to run the nylon vacuum tubing uh, through there since we have the gauge cluster out right now. So we're going to put all that in next. Okay, so we got the pressure switches mounted on this simple little bracket that I created out of some flat stock uh, metal. We attached it to the fender brace bolt and then bolted on the uh, pressure switches. We got vacuum hose teed going to it. It comes with this uh, one-way check valve. This check valve is to make sure that only boost pressure goes to those switches. I'm not sure if they can handle engine vacuum or not, and I really didn't want to uh, 
have any failures or anything. So this just makes sure that it sees boost only, no vacuum. And then we have the wiring hooked up. So here we have the, the wiring. The wiring is actually labeled, it's not shown here, but uh, so we have, we have two black wires and then we have a purple and we have a tan. The tan is for the high uh, light. The purple is for the medium. They're marked M and H on the connectors. It doesn't matter which way these go. As long as you have one black wire on each and then the tan goes to high and the purple goes to medium. Uh, obviously you don't want to have two black wires on one because that's not going to work. So mainly this, these black wires are your ground. This is going out to your light. Your light always has power. So once these switches close based on boost pressure, we provide ground and turn on the light. As for the ground itself, I mounted it on the firewall here. Uh, it sanded off a little spot. I'm going to blow some, just spot it in with some paint later so that it doesn't rust. But I grounded it to the firewall right there. Got the dashboard all back together. You can see kind of that I got the boost uh, gauge going where the clock was. Since I was in there, I added that. And sorry for the low light, but here's the switch mounted up. I didn't notice that the high decal gets hidden by the overlay. So I'm gonna add the, the high decal above it. But for right now, we can turn on the key. And if we turn the switch on, we have the normal light. So there we go. And I love the fact that the buzzer works in this car because the key is, oh, that's the fasten seatbelt. So yeah, we have the normal light on. It also will dim. If we, there's off, there's dim, there's high. And all done. So, oh. You see why people disconnect that buzzer all the time we just got a little bit more wiring to hook up to it we are uh, in, also in the process of adding the water injection but that's a separate video so that'll wrap it up for now hope you enjoyed this video helps you out with uh, installing boost lights on a turbo car that did not come equipped with them and if you got any questions feel free to give me a call or send me an email and we'll talk to you next time